Hey, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 20, please. Matthew chapter 20, look at verse 20. Follow along as I read. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons. And kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, what do you want? She said to him, say that these two sons of mine are to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Jesus answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, we are able. He said to them, you will drink my cup. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. You've seen it time and time again, especially at sporting events. The camera will focus on a great play or somebody's severe injury. It will even show fans who are standing sometimes on the field or in the stands, many times doing something real stupid, showing off for the camera. Sometimes the camera captures the intensity of the moment as they watch the game. You can see the angst on, on, uh, on, on their faces if a, if a play is missed. Then the TV camera focuses on the players. Many times they're just sitting on the bench. You could see the sweat kind of running running down their faces. And sometimes that sweat is mixed with droplets of blood. Some of them drinking water or Gatorade to replenish their bodies. And sometimes the camera will do a real close-up. I remember years ago, remember this on Monday Night Football, and... They uh, they focused on this one player, and he and he was a player that uh, he had his head shed, he his head shaved, and he had an arrow cut in in his hair. It looked like an arrow, and I forget his name, but the but the but the announcer said such and such name from the University of Mars. It was and the steam was coming out of his head because it was a cold night. And many times the camera looks right into their faces, and the player looks right into the camera. And you know what he says? Hi, Mom. You've seen that numerous times. Today is especially easy to think about our moms. I had a chance this past week to spend a couple days with mine, and it was wonderful. And we think about the things that our moms did for us. And the things that she said, uh, many of the things that our mother said to us, uh, some people call them mother-isms, you know. Things, these things that she would say to you such as, uh, I hope you have a child just like you. Yeah, I hope you have a kid just like you. Or uh, everything will come out, eventually everything will come out in the wash, yes. Or don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Or my mom had one word, one word that that she would always say and still says. I think she does it purposely when I'm there. It used to, it drives my mom crazy when the garbage can in the kitchen is filled up. And as a kid, we all took turns taking out the garbage. My brother, my dear older brother, you know, older brother, tough guy, used to hate to take out the garbage, and he'd always wait until it was dark out. Now, in Chicago, we have alleys, and the alley was always dark. And knowing that it was my brother's job, my brother didn't want to do it, so he'd always wait till it was dark out. And then he didn't want to go out there by himself. So then my grandmother, who we, we lived in a two-flat, my grandmother would have to would stick her head out the window from the second floor to watch Davy take out the garbage. But anyway, my mom's famous word, famous word that she still loves today to say, and you've heard it, kids. You've heard, you've heard your grandmother say this, garbage, garbage. 
that's the signal that the garbage needs to go out. Moms teach us about the weather, saying, gee, looks like a tornado went through this room. Or what about the lessons we learned about perseverance? Did your mother teach you about perseverance? How about this? You're going to sit there until every bite of food is off that plate. This morning, we're going to go through the scripture, and this piece of scripture is often used in a negative way, and it should be. It's about a mom who tries to weasel her kid's way into the kingdom, getting them the best choice seats in the house. Her motives were wrong, but there are still lessons that we can learn from this particular text. So, if you're still there, here we go with verse 20. Verse 20 said, Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. Well, it seems obvious that she had a good idea of what would be the best life for her sons. And don't we all want the best life for our children? And our parents wanted the, want the best life for us. And that was with Christ. She, that, that, that was her purpose. Because if, if we learn anything, even through her wrong motive, it's critical for moms to point her children towards Christ. Now, in my home... Growing up, Sunday school and vacation Bible school were always important to mom. But notice here, here in this text, that she brought her kids, her children, her sons, to the feet of Jesus. Even though she had the wrong intention, it is important to moms, or even brothers and sisters, In certain situations, we need to go to the feet of Christ. Her sons were grown up. They were big boys. I wonder if there's enough, if there are enough moms left that still lead their children to Christ. I wonder if there are still moms left who take it upon themselves as as, as one of their prayers to lead their children to Christ. Yesterday we buried, we had the, well, we buried Marion and we had her memorial service here. And if there was one child, one grandchild, child, grandchild, great grandchild within her family that wasn't saved, she made it a purpose to pray for that child. I wonder if there are still enough moms like that left. Still enough moms that have family prayer i you know what even in my family you know what we don't do we don't do enough of pray together as a family you see this mom even with her wrong motives she brought herself and her kids and her requests to christ so I know we always, and, and, and yes, it's very easy to look at this negative portion of Scripture to see her purpose, but there are still things that we, that we can learn for the positive from it. Because doesn't God, doesn't Christ teach us once over and over and over to bring our burdens to Him? We're supposed to bring our cares. We're supposed to bring our requests to Him. Do you have any family burdens on on your heart today? Truthfully now, she here, she had a family burden. Wrong as it may be, she had a burden for her children. She had a burden for her family. She was even going to stoop so low as to kind of weasel their way in, but she still had a burden for her family. She brought her kids to the feet of Christ. And that's something that that we can learn from. And then what did she do? She had an attitude. Her attitude was one of respect. Why? Because kneeling. She 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 went there. She came up with the sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. The actual word kneeling there means to actually kiss his hand. 
in one of the texts that I read, it actually means to kiss or lick. Our children carry, often carry, the attitude of our parents. If a parent has a prideful, arrogant, or negative attitude, that will be picked up by the children. The same goes for having a positive, caring, happy attitude. The children will pick that up. This is especially evident in the ministry. Especially how children react to leadership. You probably, I've probably said this. You know, growing up, when the Chicago policeman walked down the street, you had the fear of God in, in him. And you never called him by any other name but officer. You want to know why kids are so rebellious against the, the authority figures within our country today? is because their parents have taught them that. Instead of praying for those who are in authority, which we need to, they teach their children to rebel against authority, to question it. We've lost the respect for authority within our nation. We have. Look at the way people criticize the president, any president, any president, no matter no matter who he is. Look at the way people talk about him. But... Other countries don't see that. And, and here, let me tell you, I was checking in at the gate Friday morning at, at Chicago O'Hare. And, the, and, you know, you got to give your ID. So the girl looked at my passport, and, 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 and uh, she said, Mr. Toad, and she, because most people get my name wrong. Four letters, they get it wrong. And I said, oh, and she had kind of an accent. I said, oh, you, you know how to pronounce that name. And she says, yes, I am Hungarian. I said, really? Really you are? She says, do you speak Hungarian? I says, teach a little. She says, just a little? I said, yes. Yeah. So we got to talking. And you know what she said to me? She's lived in this country for about 20 years. She said, I love the way Americans support their leaders. So I just listened, though. I didn't snicker. I just listened. She said, she said, because in my country, in Hungary, and really, she, she was right, in Hungary and, and a lot of those European countries, no matter who's in, they hate you. They hate you. And when I was teaching in the Ukraine last November, they had their presidential election. Oh, Lord. You know, armed guards, everything. You know, bring out, bring out the National Army. Well, thank God we don't need to do that here. So Europe sees us in a different perspective. They do. She says, I love the way that when a president gets in or a leader gets in, you give them a chance. And, and really, we do. We do. We do respect the office per se, but less and less. This mom, this mom, even though she had the, the wrong motive, and it could have been she had the wrong motive when she knelt down. But she still knelt down with an attitude of respect. Bugs, it, when we sing the national anthem, bugs the snot out of me that people won't stand up and take their hats off. Does. But here, but notice that this mom knelt down. Some translations say that she bowed or worshipped, which does mean to kiss the hand. And many times when I'm in Asia or else the Philippines, children will come up to meet me and they will take my hand. They will take my hand and, and take it and put it to their forehead like this as a show of respect. Even if she knelt down trying to schmooze Jesus. She did teach her children how to respect him, even kneeling before him. Can I ask you something? Do you ever feel the need? But have you ever felt the need to kneel before God? You ever felt the need to just kneel before him? So she brought her kids to his feet. She had this attitude of respect. And you know what? She was honest. 
Did you ever think about that? She was honest. Verse 21. And he said to her, what do you want? He just didn't say, what do you want? I, I can't imagine Jesus going, well, what do you want? You know? No. What do you want? She said to him, say that these two sons of mine are to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. So she comes to Christ, and he says, what do you want? And you know what? Here's the kicker. He already knows. He already knows what she wants. He, and, and here, he knows what her motive is, but he still wants to hear it from her. Yeah. He still wants to hear it. And here's the point. Even though he knew, he was still interested, and, they, and he asked. Even though her motive wasn't right, trying to make sure that her sons were taken care of. She was at least honest with him, right or wrong. She was honest. And here's the thing. She was not only honest, but she was transparent. And that kind of begs the question about our transparency with God. Are we really, truly honest with Him about our struggles? Or how many times have, how many times have we thought that we can really fool Him? Huh? No. Yeah, we know we can't, but how many times do, have we ever thought that we think we can? Yeah. But she was honest with him. Hiding something from him. How many times have we tried to do that? But yes, we can't. But, but how many times have we just not been honest with him? If we're struggling with something or, or there, there is a real burden within our hearts. And I know this is a, really, the, the, you know, you would look at this mom and go, oh, and, 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 everything I, and everything I read on this, negative, negative, and yes, it is negative, but there are lessons here that we can still, still learn. Even though she was, tiny, she, she was just schmoozing him, at least she, she was honest. I question our honesty sometimes before God. My, my, on whether we're truly honest. And then, something hit her. She became aware of her request, because you know what Jesus did? Look at verse 22. Jesus answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, they, notice the plural, they said to him, we are able. So Jesus answers, and, and in, the, in the text, they, they is not her. They is them, the two sons. Notice she didn't say nothing. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, maybe she realized of how serious of what she was asking. Maybe she had, maybe she had just, when, when, just as it got out of her mouth, she went, oh. You ever done that? Have you ever said something that that all of a sudden you wish you could just take the words and go, Argh. Jesus, think of him saying it this way. Mom, you have no idea what you're asking for and how hard this journey is going to be for them. See, she, see, she, she wanted the boys to have cushy jobs. This, What she was asking for, she didn't know it, was death. So what does Jesus say? He looks at the guys and says, hey, you up for this? There's, there's a cost to follow me, which begs me the question. You up for this? Are you up for this journey following Christ? I know some of you have been doing it a long time, but there's probably been times then when the road got too rough, you kind of backed off. Or when things got a little tight or things got a little close or things got, got a little tougher that you backed off. Would it, would it be safe for me to say that it's not easy to follow Christ? That's usually a good time for an amen. It's not easy. He never said it was going to be easy. He's saying right here, are you guys able to do this? And then 
he says in verse 23, he said to them, you will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those who, for whom it has been prepared by my Father. So now she gets the truth. So Jesus tells her and her sons the truth. One thing we can always count on is God telling us the truth about Him and ourselves. Notice this. She didn't argue. There's no arguing in here. There's no debate. She accepted God's Word, even having the wrong motive with the wrong heart attitude, and she accepted it. And here's the kicker question here. How many times have we heard the truth from God about who we really are and what our hearts are really like, but don't want to accept it? Let me... Let me say that again. How many times have we heard the truth from God about who we really are and and what our hearts are really like, but don't want to accept it? We do this. We we all do it. But if we're truly honest and transparent before Him and ask Him to show us who we really look like to Him, many times we don't want to see that. You know why? Oh, because we don't want to do anything about it. So whether you're a mom or not, are you willing to, whatever your request is, are you willing to kneel before Christ? Can you be truly honest and transparent with Him and bring all of your requests? The Bible teaches us all the cares. All the burdens, all the requests, lay them on me. Right? That's what he says. And that's what we need to do. So next time you look at this portion of Scripture, I hope you look at it at a completely different light. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you enable us as believers in Christ to be honest with you. Lord, if if it's my heart or or anybody else's heart here that's not being open and transparent with you, speak to their hearts right now. But, Lord... Help us to always have the attitude and even the physical attitude of kneeling before you, Lord. Please. And we thank you for your word and the lessons you teach us, Lord. Amen. And we thank you for your word and the lessons you teach us, Lord. Amen.